Welcome to Structair's Framing World and our purpose-built roof frame training model. Today we'll be running through a conventionally framed roof, or what we call in WA a stick roof. What we're going to be doing is firstly looking at the connections you need for gravity loads, followed by what you need for wind uplift loads. So let's get going. The first thing you need to look at is your rafters, and more importantly, the span of your rafters. So what you're looking at is the span from your wall plate to your underperlin. With a sheet metal roof, with your rafters at 900 centres, the maximum span from that wall plate to the underperlin is 3200 millimetres. The other thing you need to look at with your rafters is your bird's mouth. Now this bird's mouth cannot exceed one third of the depth of the rafter, or D on three. If that bird's mouth exceeds that dimension, what you can get is excessive deflection of the rafter tail, or even worse, failure. Now let's look at the underpellants. With underpellants, similar to rafters, we are concerned about our spans. So for a single span, e pellant 83 by 51, you are looking at 1400 millimetres. For a continuous span, you are looking at 1800 millimetres. The difference is, with a single span, you are just running between two support points, while for a continuous span, you are running between three support points. Other things to look at with your underpellants is your lapping. With your laps, they need to be at least 450 millimetres and bolted over a support point. Another key point with our underpellants is our underpellant into hip connection. So if your underpellant is supporting your hip or your hip is supporting your underpellant, you need a timber block and a connection with a proprietary anchor. Alternatively, you could have all three supported and you do not need to do any further connections. The next thing we need to be looking at is collar ties. Collar ties are to be placed directly above our underpellants. The collar ties are also to be placed every second common pair of rafters or a maximum of 1200 centres. A common pair of rafters is a pair of rafters that runs from your wall plate to your ridge to your wall plate. If you have two rows of underpellants, then you need two rows of collar ties, either parallel or crossed. The next thing we need to be looking at is ceiling joists. For coupled roofs, ceiling joists are key in resisting roof spread. If you have ceiling joists continuous across the house, then you need to be aligning them with a rafter, and if they are to be lapped, then this is to be at a support point and a minimum of three times the depth of the ceiling joists. If your ceiling joists are non-continuous across the house, like where you have a change in ceiling height, then what you need to do is look at other ways to resist roof spread. One way is to provide ridge strutting. If you are providing ridge strutting, then the ridge strutting is to be done at 1800 centres. Alternatively, you can provide additional collar ties through the area where the ceiling joists are non-continuous. Another key point to look at is the lateral restraint of strutting beams. This is where you are restraining the strutting beam from rolling at the support point. There are a number of ways in which this can be done. Here we are showing the timber chock. There is also the timber block, or you can use a PGI strap from the wall plate over the strutting beam to the wall plate. Another key point of your conventionally framed roofs is your struts. The struts hold up the weight of the roof. Key items to look at with regards to your strutting is, struts must be between vertical and perpendicular to your rafters. If the strut is beyond perpendicular to rafters, it is what we call a lazy strut and it must be braced back to a rafter. If your strut is not vertical, then the base of it must be blocked. With regards to the top of your strut, the top of the strut must be either halved or bird's mouth. If it is not halved or bird's mouth, and you have a square cut, you must have a strap running over it. We also have fan struts. With fan struts, the top of the strut must be braced and the bottoms of the struts must run into each other. The next key item that we're going to look at is our strutting beams. Strutting beams, as the name suggests, support the struts. The strutting beams should be installed as per your engineering plans with the connections as per your engineering plans. Here we have an example of a connection of our strutting beams. We've used a MyTech split hanger. The other item to be careful of with your strutting beams is make sure you have 25 mils clearance of the Jiprock mid-span. 
Also with our strutting and hanging beams, we need to be careful of our end splay. When splaying the end of a strutting or hanging beam, we need to make sure that we have at least a third of the beam at the support points. If this cannot be achieved, then what you need to do is like what we have over here. This particular strutting beam has been splayed in a factory and has had nail plates fixed to it in the factory to the chocks. If you cannot get an e-splay, then what you can do is splay the strutting beam yourself, place it on timber chocks and fix it to a rafter right next to it. If you are building a tiled roof, this is where your check can finish. If however you are building a sheet metal roof, you need to look at your tie downs. So, without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you need to look at with regards to your tie downs is your perimeter tie downs. For an N1 or N2 roof, your tie downs need to be at 1200 centres. This includes over the openings. The fixing of the tie downs must be one of three ways. The first way is the tie down strap to the wall plate. The wall plate must then be fixed to the rafter with a uni tie or similar. The second option is the strap straight over a rafter. The third option and the preferred option is with the strap over a cavity batten. The cavity batten then supports the rafters. When fixing your straps, you need to make sure that the strap is tight and the nail head does not punch through the strap. The next tie down we need to be looking at is our strutting or our fresco beams. This is typically with a 10 mil rod and a cleat. With our perimeter and beams now tied down, what we need to look at is the rest of the connections within the roof. Remembering, if you need it for gravity loads, you need it for tie down. The first connection we need to look at is our batten to rafter connection. So this will vary depending on whether you use a metal or timber batten. If you are using metal battens, you need two batten zips. If you are using a timber batten, then you need a bugle screw. With the load now transferred into our rafters, we need to look at the connection of the rafters to anything it is connected to. The first connection we need to look at is the rafter to ridge connection. There is two ways you can do this. The first way and the preferred way is the mini collar tie. The second way is via a strap over the ridge. The next connection that the rafter is concerned about is the rafter to underpurlin. The easy connection here is a uni tie. With the load now into the underpurlin, we need to look at the underpurlin connection. So the underpurlin is connected to a strut. The easiest connection for that is a strap running from the strut over the underpurlin and down the other side of the strut. You could also use a uni tie for this connection. The next and final connection for our roof is our strut to our wall plate or strutting beam. Again, the easiest connection here is for the strap to come from the strut underneath the strutting beam and to the other side of the strut. Once you have completed all of these connections, your roof is now tied down. Here at Structair, we provide engineering details that show all of these connections. They also have QR codes on them that have a link to the 3D details that better show each of the connection. Thank you for taking the time to watch the training of our roof frames. If you have any further queries, please feel free to contact one of our friendly engineers in your office.